Hi everyone, good morning. I am Otilia Baraboy. I'm the executive director of ARCS, American Romanian Cultural Society. We founded the organization in 2014. We, our signature event is the Romanian Film Festival. And since 2016, we founded a Romanian school that is now uh, reaching out of the Washington state uh, borders. And we have students from all over the US. I'm happy for that. Um, and we are um, happy today to introduce to you our guests, uh, Christina Bejan and Gabriela Nenciu, who will do a um, bilingual reading of Nanata. Um, Nanata is the second children's book of the new storytellers series it's a diverse book project focused on the roma community initiated by gabriela nencio's uh, uh, non-profit qualte cuvinte in other words um, gabriela co-founded the organization in 2017 and their mission is to implement literacy and anti-bias projects in order to help kids become passionate readers who think on their feet and stand up for what they believe in. Gabriela is also a, a teacher, um, an instructor, lecturer, I think, a lecturer. Uh, Gabriela is also a lecturer in the Department, department of Romance Languages at the Brandeis University. And uh, she will tell us more about the project soon. And now I'm going to say a few words about Christina Vejan, who is a Romanian-American poet, theater artist, and educator living in Denver, Colorado. She writes history books, plays, and spoken word poetry that she performs under the name, under the stage name Lady Godiva. Her debut poetry collection, Green Horses on the Walls, Kai Vers Peperet, was released this summer. She founded the arts group Bucharest Inside the Beltway with artist Ruxandra Pop in Washington, D.C. in 2013. And since then, they have had a full award-winning cultural program promoting local and international arts. Christina is passionate about education and inspired by the words of Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Uh, welcome, Christina and uh, Gabriela. I'm very happy to have you here today and um, uh, do this recording of the of Nanata in Romanian and uh, in English. Gabriela, would you like to add a few things about the, this project? Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. I'm very happy to be here with you today. Um, so my NGO, Qualte Cuvinte, um, as uh, Otilia said, is a very young NGO. We are three years old, and we mainly implement literacy education for uh, diversity projects. Simply put, we use picture books to show and celebrate all kinds of differences between children and diverse identities. Uh, as Otilia said, Nanata, the book we are going to read today, is the second book of our very first project, The New Storytellers, a project that we began in 2017. Uh, and back then, we wanted to create uh, kids, book, uh, kids books that show the Roma community in Romania. Uh, as some of you might know, uh, the Roma community is the second largest minority in Romania, and the Roma have lived uh, on Romanian territory since the 13th century, which is quite a lot, right? Uh, however, in 2017, there was no children's book that reflected the Roma presence in Romania. Um, so, and we wanted to change that. Um, I'm going to say just a few words about our first book, uh, the uh, story of the Los Kendama, because it's very dear to me as well. Uh, the story of the uh, Los Kendama was written by Adina Rossetti and illustrated by uh, Irina Dobrescu. And it's very special for two reasons. First, uh, it's because uh, it's based uh, on stories that a group of Roma kids from Bucharest told the authors during a series of creative workshops. So in this sense, it's a book that is like created by kids as well. Uh, and they sort of become, became characters in the book and they had no trouble in recognizing themselves when we read the book with them afterwards. So I think that's great because it's participating in a book. Uh, 
uh, and being a part of it as and it's a it's a unique opportunity for a kid of I don't know 10 years old um, and even the title of the book uh, the story of the lost kendama. So kendama was a game they used to play back then. The title of the book and the plot is inspired by this game they used to play in 2017 when the book was uh, was being created. Uh, the second reason is that this book uh, won the Romanian Writers Union Prize in 2019, uh, and we are very proud of that. Uh, and we because that allows a, us to say that well it was a success not only with the kids but also with the mainstream culture and uh, also we just found out like yesterday uh, that this book is going to be an audio book as well uh, recorded by uh, by the author by Adina Rossetti so you'll have the opportunity to to listen to it as well not only to read it it was published by Editura Arthur uh, Arthur Publishing House so if you want to look for it, look in there. Uh, and uh, coming to the book we are going to read today, I'm not going to tell you a lot of things because I wanted to discover it, but I'm just going to say two things is, um, so it's the second book of, uh, of the New Storyteller, uh, New Storytellers Project. It was created by Florin Bika and illustrated by Anka Smarandake. And it's a picture book, so it's for five, year, uh, five years old. Uh, and it's available online until the end of the year in Romanian, in English, and in four Romani dialects. Uh, because we felt that in this period uh, where there are uh, very few books available online for kids, and uh, I mean uh, that are free, uh, we felt that that was you know, an important thing to do. So if you want to uh, Reread Nanata if you like it. You can read it until the, the end of the year. It's on, on our website. Okay. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you so much. Christina, would you like to add a few things about your experience growing up in America from uh, in a mixed family? Your father is Romanian, your mother is American. And what is um, uh, uh, the importance of anti bias education and education that values uh, diversity uh, and differences instead of fearing them? Well, um, of course, you know, we're celebrating a book that's uh, about, well, we are, we are reading a book today that is celebrating diversity in Romania. And the diversity in Romania has a lot of parallels with diversity and difference in the United States. I would even say multiculturalism in both countries. And um, yes, I was raised by a Romanian immigrant father. I was very aware that I had an immigrant father, that he had an accent, that everybody was asking where he was from. Um, I was lucky because he didn't mind people asking him. <laughs> and he had all sorts of untrue answers, such as France and Italy, uh, <laughs> Brazil. Um, but, you know, sometimes he said Romania. But um, I was very lucky, very, very fortunate to grow up in a, an integrated city in the American South, which is Durham, North Carolina. So, um, I was surrounded by what, what we might call the, in this um, session difference. Um, I honestly, growing up, um, wasn't thinking twice about people's skin color or um, what country their family was from. I went to a Catholic school. Catholic schools are traditionally um, very, very integrated. And so I had African-American classmates, um, Filipino, Filipina classmates, um, Hispanic classmates. So um, I, I now realize looking back that I grew up in this kind of like melting pot paradise. Mm -hmm. At least that's what it felt like to me. Of course, as I've gotten older, I've, I've been able to learn that it, it, we do not live in such a paradise in the United States, that systemic racism is very real. Um, and you know there are systems of oppression in place in this country and we need to do everything we can to um, educate ourselves, first of all, and each other um, in order to increase awareness and acceptance. And this exact same need that we have in the United States, we have in Romania, um, particularly with the Roma population, which um, very devastatingly suffered a very similar history to the African-American population in the United States, if we're talking about enslaved peoples 
um, very late uh, emancipation in terms of being able to be a participatory member of society and still at the moment um, oppression in terms of poverty, lack of access to healthcare, lack of access to education. So there are a lot of parallels and we have the same call to action in both countries. Excellent. Very well said. Yes. So um, I hope this book will be an inspiration for other educators to integrate the, it in their uh, school programs and talk about celebrate Romanian diversity. Um, and uh, so here you go. Uh, um, I think we can start the uh, um, reading the two versions in Romanian and in English. I'll go first. Yeah. Yes. Okay, go ahead, Gabi. Începem. Uh, Nanata, de Florin Bică și Anca Smarandache. Fratele mai mic al Renatei se ține toată ziua de șotii. Mami, am zi abia măzgălit cartea, se plânge Renata. O e că mic, ar dare cu el. Tati, am zi abia stricat păpușa. Ia să văd, ce o repară ta, dar cât ai bate din palme. Na, na, ta! Na, na, ta! Strigă Amza rotindu-se ca avionul în jurul ei. Mă cheamă Renata, nu Nanata, se rățoiește ea. O, oh, e mic și el. Când o să crească, o să-ți spună numele cum trebuie. O împacă baba. Of, ce bine era dacă aveam și un frate mai mare. Se gândește Renata. Frații mici sunt așa de enervanți. De afară se aud vocile copiilor ieșiți la joacă. Mă duc și eu, dar cum să scap de amza? Renate îi vine o idee. Se ascunde sub albia de rufe și, tiptil, tiptil, se strecoară afară. Renata! Treci în casă, țânone, îi poruncește Renata. Da, de ce? Ca așa zic eu, eu sunt șefa, că mai mare. Ba nu. Renata intră în jocul de-a baba oarba. Deodată, un gândac, țipă ea. Urăsc gândacii. Amza ia gândacul și îl ține în palmă în clipă până așa zborul. Hmm, îl credea mai fricos pe piciul ăsta, se miră Renata. Copiii joacă acum leapșa. Renata aleargă și ea. Plăsc! Ah, mi-a mudat pantoful. Nanata? Amza îi întinde unul dintre pantofii lui. E prea mic, nu vine, îi răspunde Renata. Ia te uită, dă mie pantoful lui? Mustăcește ea amuzată și se așează pe iarpă să se usuce. Pe cer, norii pufoși par să joace leapșa și ei. Timpul zboară. Renata visează cu ochii larg deschiși. Norii ei apar că sunt niște copii, iar cel mic se ține după celălalt, la fel ca... Renata tresare. O, țină nou! Unde o fi? Copiii se joacă la marginea pădurii, dar Ramza nu e acolo. Renata încalță pantoful în căud și aleargă să-și caute frățiorul. Dintr-un tufiș se aud voci. Doi băieți pândesc niște furnici care duc firmituri în mușuroi. Ramza nu e nici acolo. Renata ajunge la pârâu și calcă iarăși în iarbă. Îi se ude și celălalt pantof. Se uită de-a lungul apei. Amza nu e nicăieri. Pe lângă copaci înalți, vede o mogâldeață ivindu-se aici colo. Renata are o bănuială. O ia la fugă într-acolo. Mogâldeața dispare după un copac gros. Renata se apropie ușor, cu inima bătându-i să-i spargă pieptul. După copac, e chiar Ramza, care privește undeva în sus. E o veveriță în vârful copacului. Băiatul întinde mâinile spre ea. Nanata, nanata! strigă el bucuros de parcă Renata i-ar putea aduce veverița. Sora cea mare îl ia de mână. Degetele lui se lipesc de palma ei umedă. Apoi fetița îi dă drumul. Țânone, nu mă prinzi! 
Ba tu, ba tu, râde el și o zbughește înainte. Sfârșit. Thank you. Mulțumim, Gabriela. Of course. Such a beautiful book. Stop share. <laughs> yes. Okay. So now we'll hear the English version by uh, Christina, Lady Godiva. <laughs> in the... Oh my goodness. Please forgive me. No worries. Nanata. All day, every day, Renata's little brother is up to no good. Mommy, Amza scribbled in my book, Renata cries. He's still little, honey. Be patient with him. Daddy, Amza scribbled, uh, uh, Daddy, Amza broke my doll. <laughs> Let me look, but I can patch her up in no time. Nanata, Nanata, Amza chants as he does loop the loops around her like an airplane. My name is Renata, not Nanata, she snaps. He's little, that's all, Granny says, trying to console her. When he grows up a little more, he'll get her right. Why me? I wish I had a big brother, Renata grumbles to herself. Little brothers are so annoying. Outside, she can hear the voices of children going out to play. I'm going out too, but how can I get rid of Amza? Renata has an idea. Crouching underneath the wash basin, she starts to inch her way outside. Slither squirm. Renata! Go back inside, Jordy. Renata shouts, why? Because I said so. I'm the boss because I'm older. Nuh-uh. Renata joins in a game of blind man's bluff. Ah, a bug, she screams. I hate bugs. Amsa picks the bug off and holds it in his palm, admiring it until it flies away. Hmm, I thought Shorty was a scaredy cat, says Renata, surprised. Now the kids are playing tag. Renata starts running too. Splash! Oh no, my shoe's all wet. Nanata! Amza gives her one of his shoes. It's too small, it won't fit, Renata tells him. What do you know? Now he's giving me his shoe. <laughs> she grins, amused and sits down in the grass to dry off. Up in the sky, the puffy clouds seem to be playing tag too. The minutes fly by. Renata is dreaming with her eyes wide open. Those clouds, they look just like children. And that one, that little one is tagging behind the bigger one, just like... Renata shoots bolt upright. Shorty, where's he gone? The children are playing at the edge of the forest, but Amza is not there. Renata puts her wet shoe back on and rushes off to look for her little brother. From behind a bush, she hears voices. Two boys are bent over watching ants carrying crumbs back to their anthill. Amza isn't there either. Renata hurries to the stream and accidentally slips in. Great, now she has two wet shoes. Up and down the stream, she searches, but no Amza. Then something catches her eye. A blur is moving back and forth through the tall trees. Renata has a hunch. The blur disappears behind a large tree trunk. Renata tiptoes closer. She can hear her heart beating loudly inside her chest. There's Amza behind the tree. He's staring up into the branches above. Way up high, there's a squirrel. The little boy reaches for it. Nanata, Nanata, he cries, as if Renata can fly up and catch the squirrel for him. Big sister takes his hand. His fingers stick to her wet palm. She shakes them loose. Bet you can't catch me, Shorty. Nuh-uh, bet you can't catch me, he laughs and bolts in front of her, heading for home.
Wow, thank you. Thank you, Christina. Wonderful, wonderful performance. And uh, Gabi, thank you so much for the Romanian um, um, reading of the book. And um, Gabi, would you like to share the activities that you prepared based on the book? And then we'll um, talk a little bit more uh, about the message. Um, okay, so um, we are going to post this on uh, on uh, the on uh, Otila's, uh, Facebook page, uh, the Arcs project, uh, and you will be able to access it. Uh, it's very easy. You just type your name here, and then you join the lesson. And there are a couple of activities that kids can do, um, which are based on the book. Um, and they are uh, a bit interactive, so I hope you'll have fun. Uh, there is the first one, it's just a matching game, uh, just to remember uh, who are the main characters in Nananata, and you just, you know, click and match the picture. Oh, I got it, I, I didn't even think about it, and I got it. Uh, you just have to match the characters with their uh, description, uh, and then, the second one is about uh, ethnicities in Romania because 11% uh, of, uh, of the Romanians are of different uh, ethnicities. Uh, then uh, we have another, this is a drawing slide. So you can use this drawing tool to uh, find um, the uh, detail in the illustrations of that Nanata that show you uh, that the characters are Roma. Mm, and then there is a, a short quiz. Uh, and then in the end, oh, short quiz, time to climb. Oh, and then there is a uh, kind of arts and craft, uh, crafts activity. Uh, you can build a uh, kind of circle <laughs> uh, that is it's an optical illusion so if you follow the instructions and if you turn it you'll see that Nanata will appear uh, next to Amza uh, and that's all I think yeah that's all that over there so there are just uh, a couple of activities that kids can do after uh, reading Nanata and they are quite interactive so I hope you'll enjoy them Okay, thank you, Gabi. And uh, now I have a few questions for both of you. Um, for Christina, Christina, can you tell me what is your the favorite part of being Romanian and American? So having this hybrid identity. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely impossible to choose one favorite. Um, I think uh, no matter what your country of origin heritage is, um, you know, in the United States, we have, um, of course, we have friends who have multiple heritages, right? And I actually have multiple right. heritages because my mom is a mix of things. Mm -hmm. But I think it's very important to know um, your, where your ancestors come from, because that can give you a grounding and identity um, in a society that is otherwise kind of cookie cutter. Um, and so I think that that's meaningful, um, whether that's Romanian or Nigerian or Tahitian, but that matters. Um, Romanian specifically, I, the language, I learned it later in life. Um, it has proven to be very important to me. I write creatively in it. Um, and it, it can be, you know, if you are in a Romanian family in a grocery store, the secret language that you make jokes about other people in the grocery store in, um, which I do with my dad. So that can just be a fun secret. Um, but then you look at the, the um, just the culture that Romania, of course, a difficult history that we have to know about as well. That's I'm a history teacher, so of course I think we need to know about the history, um, but also the culture. Um, Romania has a rich literature, um, the theater. Um, I'm right now producing a literary series with the Romanian Cultural Institute, so there are a lot of writers coming out of Romania. 
So um, that's, I think that that's very, I mean, that's worth celebrating, but it's also special. Um, so uh, also athletes, I mean, I know that everybody thinks, oh, why is it always Nadia Komenech that we talk about? But actually that matters. It, you know, she's, she of course brought Romania to the world stage. Um, but she's not the only Romanian athlete that did so. Um, Ileana Stase, tennis, um, you know, Georgi Murashan, basketball, and Sabrina Ionescu, um, basketball right now, right? Uh, so we have um, icons in the Romanian diaspora that we can celebrate as well. Okay, thank you, wonderful. And now I have a question for both of you actually. So this is a book celebrating diversity. What, mm -hmm. how do you think, um, about the message, the way the message is worded in the book. Uh, can you comment a little bit um, on this, uh, Gabi and Christina? So from, uh, for us, Nana, I mean, that's what we want to do. We wanted to have a very simple story uh, that tells the, about, you know, life of a child in Romania, um, which happens to be a Roma, uh, a Roma uh, uh, child, right? Um, and Nanata, as you've seen, is, is a very simple story, it's a, a story about relationships between brothers and sister, how we live with each other and so on and so forth. Um, and we wanted to have this, like this uni universal, to talk about this universal childhood on one hand, but on the other hand, we wanted to have some elements from uh, the Roma culture. To, sh to show so to show the Roma presence in uh, in Romania, uh, and that's why uh, if you uh, if you notice in the illustrations uh, mainly, uh, for instance, the colors are very bright, uh, and that reminds us of the patterns that are used in uh, some uh, Roma traditional clothing. Then at some point, if you remember, there is uh, so Amza. Is, is staring apart uh, Nanata's, Renata's doll. Uh, that doll is wearing a Roma, uh, a Roma costume. Um, so that's about, uh, that's in the, uh, everything is in the illustration. All these details are in the illustrations, right? And on the other hand, there are a couple of Romani words in the Calderash dialect. Uh, Sonone and Baba, which mean, uh, granny and shorty mm -hmm. uh, and these are common words that uh, Roma people who speak the Kalirash dialect would use in in daily conversation um, so we wanted to have this story about you know being together um, about you know real about relationships about how you build relationships and but at the end of the day uh once again it's a story about the daily life of a roma a roma child in romania and uh, but it's also a story that helps us to you know to see to show and see that diversity uh that it's most of the times ignored in children's book in, in, in pictures books uh books in romania Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you. And it's true. And it's presented in, in, a, in a subtle way. I remember when we studied the book at the Romanian school here, uh, mm -hmm. the, um, all, you, they noticed the language, you know, the terms, but they were not um, aware of the differences in costumes and the colorful patterns, you know, that are not traditional Romanian uh, speaking, you know, in the, but uh, so we had to talk about it. And I'm really happy of, that you made the activities around that you know kind of notice details um that um we ki for kids who are not born here are more difficult you know more uh, it's more difficult to spot out actually yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but again i think this is part of the the entire the message of the book as well that we yes we are we are diverse but we are also the same yeah. at the end of the day you know so yeah mm -hmm. Christina, would you like to add anything uh, about it? Um, absolutely, if I may. Um, yeah. You know, I'm coming at this from, like I said, I teach history. Um, I've also been involved in um, activism since 2014 um, about these issues, actually both um, 
diversity in the United States, but also Roma rights. I've organized a couple conferences in Washington, D.C. Um, on Roma rights. And what we always said at the time was Roma rights are human rights. And I find myself now saying, after we're coming out of yet another summer of um, racial unrest in the United States, I find myself saying to my students, equal rights are human rights. So um, if we look at this as a humanity, this is a story of humanity. Um, we're talking about human rights. We all have the same rights, no matter our backgrounds. And also as an educator, I look at this through the lens of decolonizing education. And um, this is something that I work so hard to do in my own teaching and I call on all educators to join the fight. Um, but what, what it, it's very simple what it means. It means that we need to understand that stories um, that only depict the white majority in whatever culture country we're talking about do not um, represent the population, the 100% of the population of that place, right? So we need to provide story, a platform for stories of people of all backgrounds. And I think that's exactly what Nevada does. Um, and we need more of that. Um, if we can bring those books into the home, um, you know, where we see stories from people with different backgrounds than our own, bring those books into the classroom. I mean, that's really the call of the 21st century as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. Uh, thank you, Christina. So Gabi, you have a lot of work to do. I think we're all waiting <laughs> for the next project, <laughs> Nanata. Uh, can you comment a little bit? What, what future plans do you guys have? I think we need projects like yours, mm -hmm. like, just like Christina said, yeah. yeah. Actually, we are preparing the third book of uh, the New Storytellers Project. And this, uh, this is going to be a picture book about the history of Roma. Uh, and well, as you can imagine, it's going to be the first one. Uh, in, in Romania, I mean, the first illustrated uh, book for, um, about the history of Roma for kids, because I'm sure there are, I mean, I know there, uh, there are, um, uh, I mean, the literature about the Roma history and about the Roma rise is very rich, but in uh, picture books and especially uh, in Romania, there is no um, book that talks about the Roma history, the Roma history in Romania and uh, in Europe as well. And it's a history that is ignored. I mean, like, yeah, that children but uh, and adults as well do not know in Romania because uh, as I uh, was growing up, I have never ever heard anything about the Roma history in school. And I found out about uh, main, import, main events in uh, their history, in, in our common history, when I was in my late 30s. Um, so I think it's an important book because not only for kids, but also for adults as, as myself. And to make you better understand, because Krishna talked about connections, right, between uh, uh, United States and Romania. Um, to make you better understand its importance, I want to quote Ioannida Kostake, who is a wonderful Roma scholar and who is, going, uh, is currently working on this book. And let me find this. So she says that, and now I'm quoting, the history of Roma minorities has not been yet introduced into school programs. Imagine what it would be like for an African American to learn about slavery when he is 24. It's unthinkable, yet it often happens to the Roma with their story. So that describes exactly what we know uh, in Romania about Roma history. Um, so we are very excited to have this project and hopefully it will, the book will be out next year and hopefully we're, we are going to talk about it, you know, maybe next year in fall <laughs> with the authors as well. Yes, we're looking forward to it. This is such an important uh, project and especially um, when you need to distill difficult histories because we, um, that's, I guess this Romania needs to do a lot of um, memory, uh, work actually to reconstruct the lost um, histories that many minority groups and also um, um, even um, 
uh, intellectuals and everybody that was victims of the two political regimes, fascism and communism, um, uh, that marked our recent history. Uh, so there, we still need to come to terms to that. And I think um, visually, you know, such an illustrated edition of the Roma uh, history will be much more um, uh, welcome probably for, for the young generations just to understand. And it's been done in other cultures. I'm, I'm thinking of the um, the way it's done in French culture with the Algerian war, for instance. There's many uh, graphic novels about it or I'm thinking of uh, Persepolis, you know, talking about what's happening in Iran. So um, it's, it's um, I, I, I want to applaud this initiative and I hope this will be the beginning of a longer series um, of um, such histories, illustrated histories. Yeah, as well. Yeah, so um, just closing remarks, I just wanna thank you um, uh, for um, uh, doing this project together. And um, I hope you will join us for future events uh, around um, um, Gabriela Nenchu's projects, illustrated projects. And also, I hope you will follow uh, Bucharest Inside the Beltway, you know, for the literary series that they're doing right now with the Romanian Culture Institute. And so happy fall, <laughs> you know, and um, um, enjoy um, the, the sun outside. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. La revedere. La revedere.